LaFleur. Oh, yeah. The Packers' decision to pass on drafting a wide receiver this year drew a lot of responses, and many fell on the negative side given the perceived need to upgrade that position group heading into the 2020 season. So, blah, 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 GM comes out and says they want to tie everything to the run game and off of the run game on offense. While that may be the case, LaFleur does have some ideas about where the passing game needs to improve. Uh, during an appearance on ESPN Wisconsin on Thursday, LaFleur noted the need for the team to pull off more big plays than they were able to manage in his first year with the team. One area we really need to improve on is creating more explosive plays, LaFleur said. We were pretty efficient, but we were 23rd in explosive plays. That starts with play calling and maybe take a few more chances to help generate those plays down the field. Devin Funches was the lone free agent addition in the receiving core, and he's not been particularly explosive in the past seasons. So the Packers will likely have to come up with some new tricks for the old faces if they're going to turn things around. This is insane. Uh, Michael said, can I fly down for that game, get in some SEC tailgating? 100%. Bring it on, brother. Come mm -hmm. on to Baton Rouge. Uh, Carlos said, what's up? Uh, everybody, Matt LaFleur wants more explosive plays, but did not get a single quality weapon at, uh, at receiver to help their offense in the draft or free agency. That's the point. How are you going to come out and say this? Like, you're a, you're a second-year coach. You're going into your second year as a head coach. And instead They've done of nothing but try to build this team to run the football. And you're going to come out and tell the, the <laughs> local radio station that you need to be more explosive when the GM has said... We're trying to build everything off the run. Like, I'm sure the GM is fine with being 23rd in explosive plays. Like, they are insanely efficient. I get that. But the NFL, you will get your ass beat by playing efficient football in today's NFL, right? That's the quote. I will tell today's you that NFL. they had a pretty great season in spite of how they played. They had a pretty amazing season all last year. There was yeah. one team they couldn't beat, and explosive plays or efficiency wasn't helping them. The 49ers just beat the hell out of them. That, that's, it, you can't and come they back. They tried to blame it on, oh, going to California and partying. Nah, 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 bullshit. You just got your ass whipped. Yeah, bottom line. Like, you, you run up against a team with an explosive offense. You get down a couple of scores. I don't even know that the 49ers had what we would call an explosive offense. No, I mean, they, they, they had a the running offense. Like, but they had these zone reads. They had all these different things. Like, if you get into a game where you're going to have to score points, you are screwed. Like, yeah. you have to be able to find cheap shots. Even, even teams like Nick Saban's early 2000, you know, 10 Alabama teams. Like, you got to find a way. They, they would pound the football, but you got to be able to throw it deep and hit an open guy every once in a while. That's what Amari Cooper was best at. He and Calvin Ridley were fantastic at it. Right? It, well, I mean, they have the rock. a guy that they can do that with. But that's the thing. I mean, they, it, it, but they've got one guy. And at, who else? But, the, but, that's, but I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, that's kind of what. Who did Tom have when, when, when he had to do that two years ago when they won the Super Bowl? <sighs> like, that was an incredibly boring team that ran the football, ball control, efficiency, efficiency. And then every now and then, two or three times a game, he just hit Gronk. Yeah. Like, like that's you. You can win a Super Bowl doing that. The difference is, is Matt Lafleur ain't Bill Belichick, and I don't give a damn what you try to do and who you think you got on that team. You're not Bill B. <laughs> Damian Estrada said Matt Lafleur needs to stop taking bleach and Lysol. I think it's going to his head. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, "Me coach, me know how to run football." <laughs> Listen, Matt Lafleur got, got this on job fire today because he because he wants. Fondled the dock strap of Sean McVay. That's just it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's his credentials right there. Okay. Yeah. He got hired to the Titans because he had been around Sean McVay. He was the quarterback's yeah. coach, but he'd never, yeah. never done anything. Really. And our boy Fred Smith sent his rich boy son down there, and he took over that team, and the offense improved greatly. And, then, and now the crazy thing is, like, that Tennessee Titans team, the offense got better under Arthur Smith, but... Uh, Matt LaFleur leaves there and immediately takes over the Packers and goes 13-3. and three. 
No, yeah, obviously it wouldn't just because a, of offense. Uh, the, the, the going the 13 and three is you just had Aaron Rodgers healthy for the whole year. The team didn't have injuries. Like they, they and were the defense healthy. was really they, damn good. The, the, they rebuilt that team to be more defensive minded. Like a million things happened. And the schedule was better. That ain't Matt LaFleur doesn't get credit for all the 13 wins. Just like I don't give new coaches credit for all, like blame for all the losses when they take over really bad teams. You don't get to take over a really good team and then take credit for all the wins early. True. True. I don't know that they were. <laughs> Damien said Matt LaFleur equals Adam Gase. You agree with that? I, mean, I, I don't. I don't know that he's as bad as Gase. I think bad, Gase is pretty bad. I, I. I mean, I really, I really do worry about Lafleur and the the coaching ability there. I'm gonna tell you the other guy I worry about is is Zach. Um, uh, what's his ass in Cincinnati? Because he's the exact same thing with Zach a Taylor? far far worse resume. Uh, Michael said he doesn't go 13 and three without Rodgers. OG Wham no. jumps in, said, hit the like button, family. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hit the like button. Yeah, no, no he's not close to that without Rodgers or that elite-level defense that they had last year. They revamped no, right. that team. The thing that he was good at, which is offense, he, they, were, they were efficient, but they weren't great. Efficiency numbers don't win. Listen, you don't take percentages to the bank. You take checks to the bank. You take cash to the bank. Yes. All right? You don't win games with efficiency. You win it with points. And yeah. they didn't score a lot of points. They were pretty damn bad at scoring points last year. You got that right. I mean, they, they would run up against some teams and That's not be able to move the football. the great Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I love it. Today was uh, was fired up Thursday. Nah, we just like to make fun of folks. Yeah, we kind of do. We always punch up. You as got long that as right. you're punching up, it's okay. That's, we ain't hitting nobody that's down, down oh, there. Oh, Kirby's way better than me. It's fine. No, it's, we definitely got that right. That boy makes a hell of a lot more money than I do. Look, half the time we don't really know what we're talking about, but That's we sound true. like we do. I'll tell you that. And we know what's going on. All right, you guys have been absolutely fantastic today. Uh, Michael jumps in with the last comment of the day. He said, elite quarterbacks can make any system work and any wide receiver work. Look what Brady and Manning have done. And I ain't going to get into it with Peyton Manning. He always had somebody. Always had hey, somebody. Hey, man, he had always had somebody. He had like three Hall of Famers at all times on every team. Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison. Tom never had I mean, more than one on any team. That's, that's all we're saying. I'm not even a big Tom Brady fan, but I get where you're coming from. I know exactly what you mean. But it, I, I great. respect it. Great, receive, great quarterbacks can make great receivers or good receivers look great. That's what they're yes, supposed to do. 100%. That's what they're supposed to do. Drew Brees did it his entire life until he finally got a uh, 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 crybaby over here. Michael Thomas. Uh, he, the Brown Yeti said, uh, did he or did he make them? And then uh, Damian oh, Strata Reggie said, Wayne, Marvin Harrison, Dallas Clark, those guys Edwin James, were always going to be Those boys good. were Hall of Famers before Peyton was a thing. They, they, were, they were always going to be good. That Peyton's great. Peyton is unbelievable. Let the, you see, now you're making me criticize somebody I love. He's unbelievable. That doesn't mean he didn't have a full deck when he started. Damien said, uh, uh, Ben said, not in Denver, though. Uh, man. Oh, he come on. He had, he had Demarius Thomas yeah. in his prime. Uh, come on, man. First, his Super Bowl that he won, they didn't do that with offense, and you probably want to hide all the Peyton Manning film except for him celebrating at the end. Yes, that's about it. Because um, he was really bad, real bad. Let's see. Michael said he made DT and Decker look special. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, De- yeah, Decker Decker is his Wes Welker, his Edelman, his guy that he made look amazing, but he probably wasn't that great. No, no. De- he said, what did Decker do in, uh, in New York? Ben said, I don't know about that. Like, look, there were weapons on that Denver team. I mean, they, they, no, they were weapons the on NFL. Denver team. Saying that Denver team didn't have weapons. Demarius Thomas was the best receiver in football at that time. Yes, 100%. We forget that. 100%. Uh, Damien said, Matt LaFleur is Jason Garrett. Oh, that might be a better comparison than Adam Gase. I don't think he's as bad as Gase, but I think he could be just as useless as Garrett. That was fantastic. Gase, <laughs> was Gase so picks good. fights with his own players all the time. <laughs> I don't know that he's actively harmful, but he's definitely useless. That is so good. That's a, he, he could be just as useless as the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants. I love it. I love it. All right, we are getting out of here. We've uh, we've taken up 45 minutes of your day, and we do appreciate everybody that jumped in. You have all been fantastic. <laughs> Share the show with your buddies. 
We would definitely appreciate that. Make sure you are subscribed on whatever platform you are watching or listening on. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast just in case one of these days you can't quite make it in in time. You want to listen to the show. Uh, We put the podcast up right after we get done here. It'll be right up on that feed. Leave a nice review. All that wonderful stuff. You guys were great. Chris, another wonderful show. Another one in the books. You all make me so happy every day. I get so fired up during these segments. It's wonderful. Um, Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.